Good evening. It's not evening. Anyway, hello everyone. Welcome to Smackdown. No, this is not Smackdown, but this is Smackdown talk. And this should be the fastest Smackdown talk ever where I review everything I want because I have 10% battery. Not because of anything else. I have 10% battery, so I need to do this quick. So the night started with Paul Heyman opening the show where he was announcing that LA Knight versus Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel is happening. So it's actually happening. So LA Knight came out and he confronted Poe and it was amazing. It was good. It was great. I loved it. After that, we had a quick one. It was not that quick, actually. It was Santos Escobar versus Montez Ford. Basically because last week the Hurt Business attacked... Why did I keep saying Hurt Business? The Hurt Business attacked Carlito. So basically that match is now set in stone. Of course, Santos Escobar lost because of a little bit of interference from Angelo Dawkins. But at the end, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford attacked Santos Escobar and Carlito came out to save the day. So this segment was good as well. And after that, we had a little bit of a sad going segment with John going to the ring and he was like, maybe I should retire, but I'm never gonna give up. And he was like, everyone who comes out right now, it's an open challenge. He's gonna get smoked. Solo, of course, comes out. Jimmy comes out. But after this, Jay comes out as well and he helps John and basically both of them own the bloodline. I don't know where all of this is going. As I have said in previous episodes, I think this is going to Jay versus Jimmy. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jay just turns and goes back to the bloodline. It's gonna be dramatic, it's gonna be useless, it's gonna be so, such a waste for this whole J main event J Uso in Rojo situation, but I, I can see this coming. And also, uh, of course, because J is from Raw and he was on SmackDown, he was getting fined from Nick Aldis, and because Adam Pierce was there as well, Nick Aldis kicked out Adam Pierce and J from the building, and Adam Pierce on his way out of the building, he was like, Okay, game on. Yeah, that was a little bit of a fun segment there. After that, we knew that already from last week whenever Logan Paul had his match against Dylan Dennis, but Logan Paul challenged Rey Mysterio for the US Championship. I kind of want to see Logan winning. I'm not a huge fan of Logan anymore, but I want to see Logan winning because I feel like he's gonna make the US Championship relevant. Right now, it's a little bit stale. Not because Rey Mysterio is bad or anything, but nothing really is happening. But I feel like in Logan's hands, first off, we're gonna see Logan more, which is a plus. He's really gifted and he's really good in the ring. But he's also gonna try to make it relevant. And I feel like it's gonna be really, really relevant. Like almost at the level of the you know, Intercontinental Championship. So let's see what's gonna happen at Crown Jewel. I, I'm okay with Ray winning, I'm okay with Logan winning, but I prefer a little bit of Logan winning. After that, we had the A Town Down Under, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller versus Cameron Grimes and Dragon Lee. And I assume that now Dragon Lee is on the main roster. I don't know when that whole thing happened. I thought that he's gonna go to Raw because he was having a match on Raw, but apparently he's on SmackDown. No matter what, he's not in NXT anymore. He's on the main roster and he's pairing with Cameron Grimes. I don't know if this is gonna stick or he is a singles competitor. They're making a good team. They're making a great team, but unfortunately they lost. I want to see more of Cameron Grimes and Dragon Lee. Please don't break them up because I feel like Cameron Grimes is really good, Dragon Lee is really good, but I don't know if that whole feud with A Town Down Under is gonna continue. I know for sure that A Town Down Under are gonna continue with their friendship, <laughs> but I don't know where this whole thing is going. Last but not least, the main event. Charlotte Flair versus EO Sky for the WWE Women's Championship, where I was hoping to see 15-time world champ Charlotte Flair, but instead, Bianca Belair returned, and she is gonna team up with Charlotte Flair to fight damage control. 
I feel like we have seen this in the past. I'm not sure, but I feel like we have seen this, but I have nothing against that. I missed Bianca Belair so much. Somehow I imagined, I don't know, it was, it was a little bit wild of me to imagine this, but somehow I imagined how Jake Cargill is coming out, but I guess it's not realistic imagination because we don't know which is gonna be her music and I don't know if the fans are gonna be that exciting if they don't know the music and anything like this so yeah I guess I'll wait I was really hyped to see Bianca and I think that Charlotte and Bianca are gonna make great team with that being said if I was to rate Smackdown I would give it 8 out of 10 it was a solid show, it was a good show, nothing spectacular happened, we saw Logan Paul again, we saw Bianca Belair again, I cannot complain, and we had a great promo from LA Knight, what, what else do you want me to say? I'm just saying if I was rating the Smackdown, but I'm not, but I'm not, so this is it. Thank you guys so much for watching, this was the fastest Smackdown talk in history, and I'm gonna see you next time, peace.